We've all eaten delicious meals in restaurants and wondered, why don't my home-cooked meals taste like that? They don't taste the same because we don't know what chefs know until now. Niagara's best chefs are gonna show me how to make their most popular dishes in a typical home kitchen, just in time for a dinner party with the neighbors. My name is Ross Midgley and I'm the chef here at uh, Ravine Vineyard in Niagara. So many people talk about a farm to table restaurant and uh, we're actually a restaurant on a farm which gives it a unique kind of closeness I think. This farm at Ravine has been in the same uh, family ownership for more than 150 years and what sets us apart food wise is that uh, we try and respect the, the farm and our growing. We do have a one acre organic garden which produces a more than 6,000 pounds a year of, uh, of produce that gets its way onto the plates. So we've got another plate of six oysters, and then we're gonna go two burgers, uh, both fries, a short rib, and a pork chop, please. We really try and do very little fiddling in terms of the cuisine and let the ingredients speak for themselves. This whole place has got food written all over it. It's amazing. Tell me what you're gonna make for us today. So I wanna do everything that's Niagara right now. So we're having peas, strawberries, asparagus with a, a nice seared piece of Arctic char yeah. and some beautiful grains. And it's something that's easy that you can put together in advance so that when it comes to your dinner party, psh, 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 done, so and you're out. Just make those noises. That's, the, that's the plan, the noises and it's done. That's an important part of being a chef, right? Is the, the noises that you make while you're cooking. One of the only reasons I got it, there are two things. You can make fire yeah. uh, and you can make noises and the fire makes noises, so it's amazing. Yeah, I hope we can perfect. do some of that today. The, the other important question I have for you is what do you drink typically when you're making this dish? If I was gonna get fancy, I would say Sauvignon Blanc is a beautiful varietal for this asparagus, peas, some sweetness, uh, and the fish. So yeah, a nice, Sounds cool delicious. Niagara Sauvignon Blanc. Let's go here. Excellent. There you go, my friend. Sante, let's try this. Delicious. The first thing we're gonna start with is a little uh, pea puree with tarragon. I'm gonna get you to help me out here a little bit. We're gonna take some uh, frozen peas. I've let them thaw. Okay. We're gonna fill up about a cup's worth. You said frozen peas. Now why would you use frozen peas over fresh peas? So many frozen products have been picked and processed at their optimum. I mean, right. these are delicious Canadian peas, so it's really as good as you as can get. As getting them fresh and as you don't have you to get. handle them quite as much. I imagine, Absolutely. Right? So tarragon's a beautiful, nice, soft herb. If you can just pull some of these leaves off for me. So you're just, you're just basically taking the stalk and you're just pulling. Just kind pulling of against the grain. We're gonna put a, a goodly amount of tarragon in here. Right. One of the things that I like to tell people about cooking is that when you get to a, a restaurant chef level, there's not all that much measuring that goes on. So people ask me how I make my food, and I don't really know. Okay, so you're, you're kind of freestyling a lot. Which is why I always have spoons upside down in water. It's a great restaurant tip that you can put on your counter at home, and it's gonna help you a lot, because you've gotta taste your food. You have no right. idea otherwise. I'm gonna add about a tablespoon of chopped shallots. We're gonna add that whole amount okay. of tarragon. So we don't need to chop this, this is just- It's gonna, gonna, it's gonna blitz right in there. Blitz and up. in order to, uh, to facilitate that, I'm gonna add a tiny bit of this warm, uh, just vegetable stock. You could use chicken stock if you desired. We're gonna go on high. We're gonna blitz it right up. So this is gonna be the base for our dish. And the tarragon will, it will remain kinda chunky in there, which is okay. We're gonna just gonna quickly adjust the acidity. There are two ways we can do this, with a little fresh lemon, or since we have it accessible, a little bit of the Sauvignon Blanc that we've got going on. Excellent. We need a little bit of salt in here, tiny bit of black pepper, and about a tablespoon's worth of butter. Again, that's why you need a little bit of that warm uh, stock to help you just curate that up. So that's gonna soften the butter. It'll give a luxurious kind of taste to the peas already. And at this point, I think we can leave this out of the way. Okay. We're gonna revisit it literally when we plate. It can come just to room temperature and that's fine. I well, think it's gonna be a beautiful base for our, uh, for our fish. Step two to our dish is gonna involve warming up these grains and I should show this to the camera. We have rye berries, wheat berries, barley, 
and spelt. So another thing that I prepare is called sofrito. And what's, what's sofrito? So sofrito is a, it's an Italian seasoning and it's really slowly cooked uh, shallot, garlic, and chilies. It will start with a tablespoon of our sofrito, maybe more than, maybe two tablespoons. Then we're going to add our little grains. And then if you want to stir that sofrito around, I can go on to our next part of the meal. So we have beautiful Niagara asparagus that I'm going to, uh, to roast. So it takes a little bit more time, but in a dinner party application, this is also your friend because we're going to put it in the oven um, and not take it out until we need it. Okay, so it's basically at the ready. Your guests arrive. You Absolutely. Don't about it, just pulling it out and serving it. Pull it out and there you go. What you want to do is hold it uh, horizontally and applying a tiny bit of pressure, yep. it will break at its natural point. And the bottom part is just not delicious to eat. It's very chewy. That's fibrous, I guess is yep. the word. A little break and you now have asparagus that's going to be delicious right down to the end in terms of its edibility. A tiny bit of grapeseed oil. And that's just going to help it when it roasts. And a good amount of salt and pepper. Sort of more salt than you would think. One of the things that we do in the home kitchen typically is to under season. And people go and they say, why is it so good at the restaurant? It, you salt it. Because you, you put enough salt yeah, on it. it. And I'm just going to spill it out onto a sheet pan. And we're going to roast that about 10 minutes, maybe 12 minutes in the oven okay. at 425. So now let's complete our salad. I have these beautiful strawberries that are already chopped. Okay. And we're going to just add the warm grains. A very heavy pan. It is a heavy pan. <laughs> the heat that's already on the grains is going to soften the strawberries a little bit and uh, this is going to be sort of a side salad for the fish. So while you are doing that, I've got to get ready to make the vinaigrette. We have a nice bowl that has a non-slip base so we're going to build a, a vinaigrette in. This is a green peppercorn and dill vinaigrette and it's going to be the finishing part. And I'm going to get you just to maybe chop a tiny bit of dill. All right. One of the things about dill and tarragon is the same, is if you chop them too fine, they'll really darken and, and get kind of bruised. So you're perfect. All right. We're going to add Thank a little you. bit of uh, Thanks, Ross. perfect in every way. Into our bowl, I'm going to put a healthy tablespoon of Dijon mustard, a little rice wine vinegar. So while you whisk that away, I'm going to introduce, uh, again, it's our grapeseed oil. And what we're doing here is just emulsifying uh, the vinaigrette and give it that, that thickness. So you, that's looking really good. And now I'm going to add a little bit of uh, green peppercorns in brine. Okay, so you're going to put the, the brine in as well? The brine in as well, yeah. You want a little bit of that liquid. Okay. And we're going to add that whole amount of dill. Okay, I yep. just want to show so this to the camera. Pieces of dill in there with the whole peppercorns. Gorgeous. Wow. You've got a job anytime you want it. Excellent. Could probably use one. <laughs> the star attraction, I guess, is the Arctic char. So beautiful, sustainable fish from Canada's north. Now, Arctic char is a fish you can commonly get, I presume, at the grocery store. If you, you, uh, you can. The, the secret, I would say, about any seafood at the grocery store, because find out when they get their fish delivery and make sure that that's when you're purchasing your fish. So I'm going to put this right on our cutting board just so we can have a peek at it. Wow. Okay, so salt and pepper, as with everything. About the same amount of pepper? About the same amount. All That'd right. be wonderful. While you're at that, I'm going to pull out the asparagus. It's ready, all right. One last time with grapeseed oil in our cast iron pan. And when I do fish, I go with the flush side down, which has been seasoned. It's going to go down first. Arctic char has a really slimy skin side and that comes from living in ice but it makes for a very actually tender skin. Despite that oiliness on the skin, you're still gonna eat the skin on the... Uh, Absolutely. So we can kind of flip one over because ideally what I'd like to do is be able to let the skin side yeah. sit on the, on the heat and it will crisp up the skin. Not everybody eats the skin on their fish but it's where all the nutrients are and it is absolutely the most delicious if you can do that. 
Now I noticed that you uh, you're just using your hands. You have like no feeling in your. Hands. I have zero feeling in my hands Excellent. and very little in my head, and uh, which makes me a really a great shot. cook. Yeah. Exactly. You know, this is what these are two things I look for. So they're ready. But because it's cast iron, I can actually turn this guy off now and leave it. And by turning off the heat when they're on their skin side, you really can't mess it up. It's a this is a perfect drinking dish, 100%. Perfect. Just remember that. I'm pretty sure I can mess it up. <laughs> I'm just saying. <laughs> so I think what we want to do now is uh, plate it up. Plate it up. All plate right. Plate it up. I Let's think we're it. ready to go. Put down some of the tarragon and pea puree that we made, that beautiful stuff at the start. And that's where our fish is going to sit. While you're doing that, I'm going to do a little bit of our grain salad and strawberry. We're going to make a little half moon here. Oh, wow. I'm going to do a couple pieces of our asparagus. And one of the things I love to do with, uh, with char is just turn that back. And put a little bit of fresh dill right in there. Prop it up out like I'm saw. Beautiful. Oh, wow. So this is our green peppercorn and dill vinaigrette. And I'm going to pour it mostly on the grain salad. And that is our finished Niagara Now plate. Wow. I think we're ready for a dinner party. Me too. Thank you so much for this great meal. Really appreciate it. Cheers, guys. Thank you. Cheers. Thanks for coming. Thank you. Cheers. 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 Cheers.